Hello and welcome to a session of data interpretation. In this session, we shall look at examples of line graphs. Let's have a look at the graph. Now in this graph, okay, let's look at the directions. Consider the following graph and answer the question based on it. So there's nothing much in the directions, but we'll have to read the graph carefully. Now on the x-axis, it is 0, 2, 4, 8, 6, which is uh, the months. And on the y-axis, it is calories. Let's look at the bottom. Calories required per day by baby boys and baby girls in the first 18 months of their lives. So this graph gives us what? The calorie requirement of babies of say two, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 corresponding to 18 months for boys and girls separately. Boys, the lines is given in terms of triangles and the girls, it is given in terms of circles. So here <coughs> in the same graph, we have boys, girls, two lines. What all do we understand by these lines? Now, if a line, now if I see two things, first of all, the corresponding points. Now the difference between each and every corresponding point is same, which is two months, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So it's, all, uh, it's actually constant. So there's only two months. So if a line is steeper, or rather it's at a higher elevation, then it shows us what? It's a higher incline or a higher increment or a higher increase. If it is slightly flatter, which means it's a lower increase. If the line is actually going down from one point to the next corresponding point, then there is a decrease. So by looking at just the line, the, the angle at which it is inclined or it is declined, we can Outrightly say that yes, there is an increase at a high increase or a low increase compared to another one or a decrease. Let's start looking at the questions now. At what ages are the requirements of calories for baby boys and baby girls equal? We can also look at calculating each one of them, but then how do we see it? Now the points at which both of them are intersecting with each other or overlapping is the points at which they are equal? Now, if I start 0 months, okay, they are not overlapping. At 2 months, yes, they are overlapping. So, boys and girls are at the same point. If I go further, 4, no, 6, no, 8, yes, again, at 8, they are overlapping. If I go ahead, 10, no, 12, 14, 16, 18, none of them are overlapping. So, I can very clearly say at 2 months and at 8 months, they are overlapping, which means that their calorie requirement happens to be the same at these two points, which is two months and eight months. Hence, the last option which gives us two months and eight months is the right option. Let's have a look at the next question in the same graph. The difference between the calories requirements for baby boys and baby girls at the age of six months is approximately equal to. If you look closely into the graph, there, is a, there are lines between zero and 500. How many lines are there? Let's start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4 lines. So I can very clearly say that the first line is corresponding to 100, second is 200, third is 300, fourth is 400. Same way for the entire vertical axis, same thing is replicating. So from 1000 to 1500 is 1100, 1200, 1300 and 1400. Now let's start finding. For girls at 6 months, the circle is where? slightly below 1500 at the line just below 1500 so it is 1400 for boys it is two lines above 1500 so it is what 1600 and 1700 so there is 1400 for girls 1700 for boys so the difference is what 300 calories so 300 is actually the right option which is option a let's look at the next question if in a family there are four baby boys aged four six 8 and 12 months respectively and 3 baby girls aged 2, 8 and 16 months respectively then what is the total calories required? Too many boys and girls in the same family but let's start looking at it. <clears throat> at the age of 4 months, now 4 months it is 1 notch below 1500, the triangle is 1 notch below 1500. Let's complete the boys first, so for 6 months uh, 6 months it is 2 notches above 1500, so it becomes 1700. For 8 months it is bang on 1500, so that's 1500. For 12 months 
okay 12 months it is actually if you look it is at 3000 so 3000 so it's 1400 plus 1700 plus 1500 plus 3000 that is the requirement for boys what about girls so two months at girls is two notches above 1000 so the circle which is actually overlapping so it's 1200 then for the eight months eight months it is exactly on 1500 and for 16 months it is exactly on 2000 so 1500 plus 2000 plus 1200 so the total for everyone becomes 12300 which is the first option so 12300 is the right option let's have a look at the next question it can be inferred from the graph that in general calorie requirements for baby boys and baby girls now there are four things given completely on different things so we'll have to check each one of them so let's see for the first one the calorie requirement for baby boy and baby girls are quite different at all ages at all ages it is not at almost all ages so at all ages means they have to be different at all but the first question said if you remember it was two months and eight months where we found out that both of them are same so they are technically not same at all ages at two uh, not different at all ages at two months and eight months they are same so first statement actually is not completely true or rather I cannot mark it true let's look at the second statement calorie requirements for baby boys and baby girls are similar till the age of 17 months this again is not same because they are not similar at one point in time this is going on up and another point there is going down so if you look at from 0 to 2 months both of them go up 2 to 4 one of them goes up one of them goes down so there is no similarity there right so we cannot again mark the second option correct let's look at the third statement reaches a peak value at the same age wait a second when is the peak value for the boys looking at the triangles it's 16 months when is the peak value for girls it is 14 months so this also is not true hence the last option which is none of these happens to be true because the first three options are not actually getting you somewhere let's have a look at another type of example let's have a look at this figure the following graph gives us information about the number of washing machines produced by HLL during 1999 to 2004 okay now this is again a line graph but here there are two separate y axis one on the left and one on the right one on the left gives us number of machines in thousands and one on the right gives us total value of machines in rupees crores and the figure shows washing machines manufactured by HLL the one which is the gray box gives us the number of machines now number of machines has to be compared with the left side which is left axis whereas one on the right gives us the value of machines which is in transparent triangles let's look at the question now what was the value of each machine in the year 2000 now in the year 2000 let's have a look at both the values number of machines and value of machines because total value of machines divided by total number of machines will give me value of each machine right so number of machines for number of machines I have to go for the gray blocks and then I have to refer to the left axis which is number of machines axis so here it is slightly above 4 so I can probably assume it to be around 4500 and what about the right hand side now that gives us the total value of machines for the total value of machines if I start assuming it will be somewhere around 25 or rather 25 crores so 25 crores divided by 4500 will give me how much will give me the second option which is 55,555 that will be the right option here so this is how in the same graph there are two separate axes or rather two separate reference columns for each line or each point here there is only one question but suppose there were two or three or four more questions then it is always wise to start putting the values which are required looking at the question had it been the value of 2000 also required in 2001 and 2002 I would have preferred to write down the three corresponding values of these ones right at the outset because the confusion can be very easily created by the two axes. Anyways, 
Using the line graphs, we can actually find out a lot of things. The slope of the line will give us an idea about the increase or the decrease. So we'll have to keep that in mind while solving and of course use mental calculations to make the calculations easier and faster. All the best.